In the midst of the current situation between Russia and Ukraine, a lot of public figures that exist within the Russian-speaking sphere find it very difficult to voice their opinion and to just exist because as a public person, there's a very big weight from the public on you because everybody expects you to say something. And not only that, but also there's immense pressure from the legal standpoint when being too outspoken and too vocal could possibly be dangerous for your safety and your freedom. I find myself in such situation, to be honest, but a lot of the public figures in Russia who exist primarily in the Russian-speaking sphere find it even more difficult and sometimes when they are forced to talk about it it ends up going very very terribly <laughs> Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russia, and how you guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, guys, we're going to be talking about a very interesting case. A case of an immensely popular Russian-speaking Kazakhstani stand-up comedian who got cancelled for his comments about Ukraine, or should I say, like thereof, during one of his stand-up shows. I think it's a very fascinating case, so let me explain what happened first, then I'm going to comment on it, and it's particularly interesting to me because it almost kind of reminds me of my situation and the comments that I'm getting. So, who's our character? Nurlan Saburov is a Kazakhstan-born, Kazakhstan citizen, Russian-speaking stand-up comedian who's immensely popular in Russia. This guy is huge. He might be the biggest stand-up comedian in all of Russia, to be honest. He's 30 years old and he was born and raised in Kazakhstan and lived for the majority of his adult life in Russia. Nurlan is mostly known for his participation in the huge Russian uh, YouTube show called Что было дальше? Which is essentially a show where they invite a famous person and just make fun of them for 30 minutes. And these videos get like crazy views. Tens of millions. I mean, it's insane. He's going around the whole of Russia and the whole of the post-Soviet walls, giving stand-up specials and throwing comedy shows. Like, this guy was doing very well for himself. However, that all came to an end when in March 2022, he went on a stand-up special tour in the United States of America. Now, Saburov's tour to the US actually was planned before the conflict between Russia and Ukraine started. However, he still decided to go on with it and the shows were not cancelled and it might have been a terrible mistake because... This is what happens. А почему ты молчишь тогда? Выскажись против. Почему ты съел язык и молчишь? Нет, если ты засал, так и скажи. Я боюсь сказать нет. Да, так и есть, братан. У меня есть семья. Вы, вы должны понимать. Я понимаю. Но вы должны понять. Вы должны понять, что у меня есть тоже свои страхи, да? Вы из кого мне делаете? Выскажись против, люди умирают, да там семьи умирают, семьи моих друзей. Мне никто, никто не обязан. Не обязан. Дружище, Я понимаю, никто. но ты должен сказать, что Я ты против. Я не обесцениваю, ты мой кумир был. Когда-то, когда-то ты был мой кумир, когда-то. Это я, я во-первых, давай, я даже не понял тебя. А, во-первых, я искренне соболезную. У меня есть, я человек крышный. Я... Но я, я не дебил. Когда я вижу эти кадры, я не, я не думаю, что так и надо. Ты из кого меня делаешь? Я, бля, сочувствую. У меня есть, у меня свои дети. Ты думаешь, я не сплю? Ты думаешь, я урод? Ты в кого с меня... Вот все эти люди, кого вы из меня делаете? Вы думаете, я тот говно, который... So yes, essentially at one of his shows in Los Angeles, a person stood up from the crowd who apparently was a Ukraine immigrant and he uh, asked Nurlan about his thoughts regarding the special military operation in Ukraine. And as you can see, Nurlan's answer was basically that he can't really talk about it because he is afraid and he cannot really speak his mind and he's scared because he has a family to take care of and he has his business and everything, which in my opinion is not even that much of a terrible statement. You know, he said basically, God understand I'm a human being when I look at this. I understand that this is not right and everything. Like, he didn't directly say it, but he kind of said that he's against it, right? I mean, pretty obviously, when you ask a person about their opinion on such a uh, controversial matter, speaking negatively about which puts you in real danger of imprisonment, if that person's reaction and response is, I'm scared and I can't talk about it, that means they're probably not truly in support of it, you know what I mean? So yeah, that initial incident started a lot of discussion online, and some people were really mad at him, because people were like, yeah, look at this guy, he's not saying shit, he's being silent, he's being complicit with whatever's going on. And the other clique was actually defending him, saying, Hey, fuck you, if you're so brave, go out there and defend your country. Go back to Ukraine. Don't touch our boy. Which I think are both kind of extreme ways of looking at it, you know? So yeah, that first incident already started kind of a shit show, but Nurlan was not cancelled yet. However, what followed then was pretty bad for him. Nurlan, uh, 
Потому что на таких цыкунах, как ты, держится режим Кремля. Ты звонил своим фанатам Харьков? Nurwan has had like three or four shows after that in the US as well and uh, at every single show now there were even more people basically doing exactly that because that happens Ukrainian people who actually were mad at him for you know not voicing his opinion they started buying tickets to his shows to just come and you know kind of protest against him and uh, ask him the hard questions and he just got like worse and worse with every single occasion I think there was one time in like his second concert when uh, somebody with a Ukrainian flag came into the audience and he was escorted out by the security and essentially I think on every single concert after that if somebody stood up and tried to talk up to Nurwan about Ukraine they were like immediately escorted out by security and basically just kicked out of the concert and later as well what happened is that some other people tried to get in into Nurwan's uh, show with the Ukrainian flag and also they had like the Ukrainian flag painted on their face or something and they were not let in Абсолютно не политическое мероприятие, поэтому мы не пускаем... Я понимаю, а почему вы не выходите из Украины? Не-не, мы сегодня не пускаем людей с какой-либо символикой. Чтобы... Because the face control basically said we do not allow anybody with any kind of governmental symbols. And yeah, there's just like dozens of these clips at this point of somebody trying to antagonize them at his concert and uh, being just straight up kicked out by the security. And obviously, this created a lot of backlash. On the next concerts after that, not only were people coming in trying to talk to him and ask him about Ukraine, they actually started organizing and throwing protests near the venues when he was performing. So pretty much with every single show, he was getting into more and more trouble. And then the worst thing happens at his last show in America. A woman stood up from the crowds and ran up on the stage wearing like a robe covered in blood, which obviously is meant to symbolize the death and the suffering of the Ukrainian people. And obviously as soon as she tried to get on stage, security came out and was pushing her off of the stage and Nolan said the worst thing he could have probably said in that scenario. <laughs> Yeah, he said to her, is that period blood? And holy shit, this right here, this was the moment when this man got cancelled, bro. Because look, I get it, right? I get his line of thinking. I mean, as far as I understand, when you're a stand-up comedian, you always gotta sort of, you know, fire back at hecklers, right? If somebody's trying to talk shit about you from the audience or whatever, you can throw like a quick little insult and like completely destroy them and the audience is gonna be like, yes, we love you. So I think that was his line of thinking here, you know, when he saw that woman, he was like, haha, what is that, period blood, lol? But the thing is, like, it was not a heckler. It was a lady, uh, who's outfit was supposed to symbolize the blood of the Ukrainian people. And yeah, this was probably not the best thing to say, in my opinion. And yeah, pretty much after that incident, everybody on the internet at this point started talking about it. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still people that are defending them right now, but I must say that the amount of people who started hating on them and canceling them has increased exponentially. Because before that, some people were like, yeah, we get it, you know, he can't say much, but when he made that joke, which was very distasteful, that was the moment where a lot of people flipped and were like, nah, this is fucking and this is just fucked up at this point. And that's kind of the case for me as well. And uh, after this incident, he didn't throw any more shows in the US. And also, he planned to have a whole tour in Israel. And he canceled that completely because he understood that the backlash is going to be insane. And he's probably not going to have a great time performing. So yeah, this is what happens. Now you guys have to hear out my take on this. Um, don't get me wrong. For that period blood comments, that hate is completely justified. That was fucked up. That was un uncalled for, you know? And also, kicking people out out of your venue just because they express an opinion as well that's kind of weird but for the initial videos that came out i don't really think uh anything that he said was that bad to be honest and actually i had a lot of empathy for him at that stage when those first videos came out i've already talked about this on his channel right i made a video why i don't talk about ukraine that much and i was pissed off in that video but uh i've been getting like an insane amount of comments from just people who don't know who i am or what i stand for saying that i'm like a baby killer or whatever and that like i'm a kremlin puppet and that i've uh, i'm a pussy basically and i'm not talking about Ukraine and this the oldest shit which as well could not be further from the truth right and I said in that video that the amount of things I can say on this YouTube channel is pretty limited because I worry about my safety I worry about my family and I want to see my fucking family okay and I feel like this guy in Nurulan is kind of in the same position a little bit I mean don't get me wrong my take is not really one-sided because here's the thing a lot of the people that are defending this guy right now if you look in the comments they're saying shit like oh these people in the crowd that are calling them out it's great for you to 
say all this shit when you're safe and sound in your America. If you're so brave, go and fight for Ukraine then. Yeah, my take is not really the same as this, because first of all, right, I don't really think the act of going to your home country, which you've probably never been to, maybe if you're son of an immigrant or something, and literally taking part in military action, I don't think that's the same level as uh, of... Uh, risk as uh you know saying something uh, as a russian comedian on stage i don't really think that's the same level of risk that's like hyperbolized to shit obviously being under fucking fire is worse than you know saying something on stage so yeah that's definitely not my take but it is a take that's partly true to be honest because these people that are calling them out when they go to that concert and they call out nurlan what they do next is that they go back to their apartment in new jersey or whatever and just chill and nothing's ever gonna happen to them meanwhile if this guy nurlan says something really drastic on stage while well, he's gonna go to prison in Russia, you know? It's not really the same level. It's like, what are you talking about? I feel like people have just like no concept of the repercussions you might face. And I actually found that kind of empathetic about my situation because dude, I've been getting messages. I've been getting like death threats and people from like Europe. For some reason, it's usually people from like Lithuania or whatever. I don't know why. But yeah, most of the messages telling me to like straight up kill myself were basically from those countries. I don't know why. I still love y'all, by the way. I love you guys, but uh, it's just weird. I don't know why. But yeah, I've been getting messages straight up telling, you know, my entire family to get cancer and for me to kill myself because I'm not doing enough. Which is very easy to say from your glass house sitting in Europe where uh, you have free speech and democracy. And this is kind of like what's going on with this guy. Well, with the only exception uh, being that I don't make uh, terrible period blood jokes that are completely uncalled for. I would never do that. But uh, to some degree, I'm not gonna lie, I do empathize with him because I'm kind of in, almost in the same boat. Now, the next take I've also heard from a lot of people defending Nurlan right now is that, well, he's not even Russian. He's a Kazakh. He's ethnically a Kazakh. And he was born and raised in Kazakhstan, not even Russia, so he's like technically not connected to it in any way and he should not even have to talk about it. Well, that's kind of partially true, but I don't even think it's that simple either because to be honest, he's a Russian-speaking comedian, his comedy, his shows are completely all in Russian, he's known in Russia, he's a Russian star, and for the last like, you know, 15 years or something, he's been living in Russia, paying taxes to Russia and everything, like he's part of the Russian society, you know? So yeah, this say doesn't really hold up that much to be honest, but yeah, it's just kind of interesting that the the Russian-speaking stand-up comedian that inevitably got cancelled. I mean, let's face it, this sh this would have happened to somebody else anyway. But it's just very interesting that this did not even happen to an ethnic Russian. It happened to a guy who's from Kazakhstan. The world is fucking bizarre, man. What can, what can I say? And yeah, mainly online right now, the main uh, hate, or should I say can canceling, of Nurlan is happening, of course, on the side of the Ukrainian people. And I totally get it. Don't get me wrong, right? I understand that I'm Russian, so this is why I talk about the nuance of this and, you know, how... He's scared about speaking out because it's not the safest thing to do. But obviously, if you're in Ukra if you're a Ukrainian and if you look at the situation, you don't care. You're like, fuck you, I'm being bombed right now, you know? I totally understand why people are mad. And, you know, I'm not gonna call Ukrainians stupid or anything for being mad at this guy. It's completely warranted. Especially after that period blood comments. I mean, really. So yeah, the main cancellation or hate comes from Ukrainian people and also uh, Russian people that are sympathizing with Ukraine. They're like, you know, really going hard in on this guy right now. And a lot of the people defending Nurlan actually are, you know, like the Z types, which is interesting. And just people who understand that he has things to lose. He has his job, he has his family, he has his whole life is in Russia, basically. So, uh, yeah, it's not a super easy situation. And uh, I would say in situations like these, once again, um, it's really easy to hate on somebody and to judge them. But what I like to do usually is that when I see something like this happening, I try to imagine myself in this guy's shoes. And for me, it's not even that hard to do because I'm kind of in a similar boat, to be honest. But uh, I usually just try to imagine myself myself in that person's shoes and uh, try to think about how I would act. And to be completely honest, I feel like the majority of the people that are hating on him right now, the majority of them would have probably acted kind of like him. Except for that period blood joke, okay? That was not good. But in the grand scheme of things, I feel like a lot of the people would be very cautious and would kind of act like him, you know? So yeah, I just decided that I'm gonna make a video about this because I think it's very interesting and it shows like a particular trend in, in how, uh, in what it's like, I guess, to be a Russian YouTuber, comedian, whatever, entertainer, let's put it that way, who has fans not only in Russia, but also in Ukraine, across the entirety of the post-Soviet space, and also abroad. I think it's just a very interesting uh, case. And honestly, I don't think this is a career-ending thing for Nurlan, because at the end of the day, the majority of his fan base is Russians, and he's probably gonna do just fine. And uh, to be completely honest, with most of the people who get canceled, people forget really quickly. That's the truth, though. So he's probably gonna be fine, to be honest. It's not like this 
video is like, oh my god, you guys are ruining his life. It's over. You canceled him. No, he's gonna be okay. Let's be honest. He's gonna be fine in like a year, okay? But yeah, still, I think this is just a really interesting case and uh, I wanted to talk about it. Anyways, guys, I think this is gonna be pretty much it for today's video, though. If you guys did enjoy it, then please make sure to slap the like on it. As well, guys, if you want to support me additionally, then go over to the description. There are my uh, the codes to my Bitcoin and Ethereum wallets and stuff. You can donate to it if you want to support me additionally. And yeah, guys, this is gonna be pretty much it for today's video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.